This video is sponsored by the 3-0 Podcast, where myself, Matt Goff, and my two friends, Chuck Leggett and Ethan Ormston, are three massive football fans who each bring a football topic to talk about each episode. A topic could be going through in detail a player's career like Lionel Messi, or the Premier League's top 10 moments, and many more topics, anything to do with football or soccer for you Americans out there. Literally anything we can think of each week, we bring. You can find us on Google Podcasts, CastBox, Podcast Addict, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. We're also on all social media platforms at the 3 Nil Podcasts or 3 Nil Podcasts. Seriously, go check us out. You're guaranteed to learn something and there's a slight possibility you might find us funny as well. Anyways, thanks and let's get on with the video. Hello and welcome. It's M Goff 1200 here, or should I say it's Matt Goff. Uh, I'm joined by Chuck Leggett today, or also Wacko Desperado slash Chuck Sort of Man. Uh, hello, Matt. Excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you guys have just witnessed, Chuck's internet is awful. I'm going to try my best through editing to try and make it so that, um, you know, it's not notice- noticeable. Um, oh, but anyway, it's going to be try and make it noticeable yeah well what you, you're gonna try your best to make to lag out and stuff. i'm gonna try gonna my best yes. <laughs> anyway um so we're gonna talk about the fifa 22 beta um because luckily uh, both chuck and myself have been selected um to, to test it out <laughs> yes so... <laughs> yes both of us together yeah. um, what lucky draw that was yeah 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 um <laughs> So, so yeah, we're going to talk about it and we're going to be breaking it down hopefully uh, through two or three videos. Definitely going to be at least two. Um, we'll figure it out, obviously, the longer um, it takes, we'll work out. Um, but we're going to try and cover everything, all the game modes, all the gameplay, all the overlays and stuff like that. Just just cover as much as possible. Um, obviously, we can't show you anything, so it's, it's, we're going to be talking about that. So I'm just going to put that out there now. Um, so, yeah, and first, should we just talk about the gameplay chart? Do you want to, shall we talk about that? No, I, do we talk about the game first, or do you, do you want our, our do, do they want to know our reaction? You know, do we think it was good? Do we think it was bad? Okay, just, uh, just general reaction first, I think. Yeah, okay. I mean, general reaction is good, but it is a beta. Yeah, so there's I, a I understand. Of, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it is a beta, though. So there's a lot of things that you'd expect to be fixed by the time it comes to the actual proper release oh, of the game. Um, it. De- it definitely felt like, it definitely felt like like a classic FIFA demo because there were demos back in the day. Yeah, well, this is even before the demo, isn't it? So <laughs> um, there's still demos now, but yeah, the, at least demos are slightly more polished. Whereas, yeah, this is there. There were quite a few glitches and stuff that I mean we'll get into when we when we get to the glitches part of of this uh, podcast. But um, but yeah, okay. Shall we go into the gameplay then? Um, I mean, shall we start with passing? I think that's a good place yeah, to start. Yeah, I, I felt passing in this beta was crisp. Yeah, I I felt like it. Went, the The movement of the ball, the movement of the players, the the it felt a lot, a lot like the build up was a lot slower though. Mm. Everything felt a bit more methodical, a bit more thought through. Yeah, I, I to be honest, I, I wrote down on my first impressions that I didn't really like the passing too much because it's very intermittent. And now I've got used to it a bit. Um, I do like it. Like you say, it's very crisp. Uh, you, it just takes a bit of getting used to. But I think this is the best FIFA for passing that I've played in a long time. Just because there's, like yeah. you said, there's so much more feel to it. Like you really notice if you overhit a pass. The only thing I don't like now is that triangle balls are quite overhit a lot um, that I've found anyway. Um, so if you if you just tap t- triangle in previous FIFAs, if you just tap it, it would put it slightly ahead of the player. Um, whereas now, if the player is running and you tap triangle it will launch it still um, rather than just putting it kind of just in their path just a little bit, um, which I found is a bit awkward and annoying. <laughs> um, so I think I agree with you, Matt. Like the triangle balls, this this beta have, have been a little bit o- over hit. So I remember last FIFA, you could use triangle as little, just pass slightly in front of the player, just to keep them moving forward. Mm, but yeah. this time it feels like every triangle was an L1, sorry, an R1 triangle. Yeah. Just to play a ball through. And Every time, like it's like the the per- play is perfect running there, and the 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 ball will roll through perfectly for the defender to pick it up, mm, rather than yeah. into into the attacker. 
Mm. Yeah, exactly. And another thing I'd like to point out as well, this is slightly on the defending topic, but we'll keep it to passing at the moment. When you win a ball back and then you pass the ball out from defence, it's so easy to get it wrong. <laughs> I don't know if you've done that a few times, but last FIFA, generally speaking, you could see players around. And for some reason, the AI, which is another topic, for some reason, they can make interceptions very easily. Um, it's so hard to pass it back out from the defence. You really have to orchestrate, like you said before, Chuck, about positioning your players and making sure you know where like at least three players are or as you cannot pass out from the back you can't just like lump it up really it does feel um, like your arsenal at some time trying to pass well i mean if you if you mean like conceding and stuff then then yeah because you pass it straight no, I mean, to just, like yeah maybe just more pass, like passing it out the back, back. Don't, yeah let's not mention his name today yeah oh, okay we, we, we can keep it to one mention um but yeah so yeah passing is Overall, I'd say it's not an improvement. I'd say it's about the same because it's improved in the crispness of it and stuff. And the, like the, especially the X passing and the crossing, it's really nice. The triangle passing, it's a downgrade, I think. Um, so, so, yeah, overall, it's, it's okay still. <laughs> it's not necessarily improved um, would, be, would be my verdict. Um, is that the same for you, Chuck? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's not necessarily improved, but I think for the for the game itself, there could be a, a great improvement on it. Mm, yeah. If they sort the triangle balls out, I think then it's a massive improvement. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, my, my pace hall game style is going to be very strong. Mm, yeah. Um, next, dribbling. What was your first yeah, you're, impressions? You're, you're going to have to take this one, Matt, because you know I've never been able to dribble. I can't do, I can't do my um, classic straight line runs offline. Oh, okay. I can only right. play offline and my straight line runs don't work against the AI. <laughs> um, I found, I have found that you can dribble against the AI this FIFA or yeah. this beta because mm. last season you couldn't do it. They just knew exactly mm. what you were going to do. Whilst this one, they're a little bit more hesitant. Yeah. I mean, I I've got to be honest. When I've been playing against the AI, I've been, I've been, usually I play on ultimate difficulty. I've only been able to play it on world class for some reason, but I think it has been because a majority of it's been on career mode and I've been playing with like 60 to 70 rated players. So it's slightly harder. Um, but, but yeah, I do think dribbling has improved. Um, like you say, again, it's a theme. It's just a lot crisper. Um, there's a lot more little animations, like mini animations where you can control them, keep hold of the ball. Um, uh, but one big noticeable di difference is that when you're sprinting, say if you're a centre-back, we see it a lot in today's modern game where centre backs drive forward um, with the ball and trying to drive, almost use their bodies as a shield and have the ball like next to them as they're dribbling forward. Uh, and you can kind of do that now. It's, it's a bit of a weird one. You can't exactly shield the ball while you're sprinting, but you really notice if you're a big centre back and you drive forward um, and you, you crash into someone, if their strength is quite, quite high, like 80 or above, you can kind of carry on <laughs> as long as they don't hit the ball, your player stays up and you can still charge through. You, you slow down obviously, and you feel that your player feels the contact, but you can still go through, which is which is a nice uh, addition because before more often than not, your player would just stop or something. Um, but yeah, so, so overall dribbling is improved. It's not by much, but it's, there's, there's nicer things that's been added. Like I said about the, the big center back, if you're a big player, you notice, um, but also, with that being said, you really notice the momentum of players because if you're quite a small player and you charge into someone, I'd, you're going to get boss off the I board. would just like to say ball mm. roll is still overpowered. It's very, yeah, especially against the AI anyway. Like, I, I, I don't think I've been tackled once using ball rolls. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I'm, I haven't noticed any new skill mm. moves, to be honest. Um, then again, I actually haven't looked. I haven't, it was one of the few things I didn't think to look at, actually. Um, but usually they add one or two skill moves each FIFA, don't they? So I'm sure those of you that love to know all the different skill moves will go and look at those. Um, but yeah, there doesn't seem to be a notable difference in skill moves per se. Um, it's just like in terms of animations anyway, the difference on the AI against other players, might there might be a bit of a difference because there are obviously so, some uh, skill moves that are more way more overpowered than others. Um, so so yeah, but, but yeah, overall, I think it's a good improvement. Um, Next, shall we go to defending? Oh, okay. I'm I'm usually a very good defender in these games. You know, when we mm. when we do cop seasons together, I'm usually the 
the one who can do the defending. And I really struggled this FIFA, this this FIFA beta. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Ultimate Team, when I started coming up against 91 Team of the Week Ronaldos and stuff like that, it just felt like everything was so slow. Like there was mm. no movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is going to be a theme as well. We're going to talk about on and off the AI until we actually get onto the section. But when you're defending against an AI that's that has more than two players, maybe, um, it's very hard, even if you've got a full team. Um, but just because simply the player selection feels horrible. It, it just feels horrible. And uh, there's a second cursor that shows you which player, if you tap L1 or is it LB, I think, on Xbox, or I don't know, no clue what it is on PC. Um, <laughs> but I'd hope you're using a controller on PC for FIFA, to be honest. But um, but uh, but yeah, so, and there's a cursor above the second player that if you tap it, it then goes to it. Sometimes that changes, or sometimes you tap it and it doesn't go to that player. So, and I've, I've Absolutely. never trusted that anyway. And I usually do use the, uh, the right analog stick to flick because um, you can also change player that way. That still doesn't work very well. For some reason, this FIFA, it works worse than the pre previous one. Um, and there's also a thing where when you... Okay, there's one improvement, though, actually, which you can choose in the settings, um, which I suggest you do. Um, and basically, I don't know if any of you have had this problem before, where you change, change to a player that's sprinting when you're defending. You change to a player that's sprinting and say, if you're the current player that you have before uh, is, is moving right and you change to a player that's sprinting left, that player will then sprint right or, or stop moving and then carry on um, in any previous FIFA that we played. It will then stop moving and then carry on. Now there's a, there's a uh, option you can cl click, which basically says when you click the player to move, to when you uh, select a different player, it then carries on that animation for like half a second or so, or you can set the timing to almost immediate, um, immediate, slow, super slow, something like that. Um, so you can set the timing and then it's basically just a bit more smoother. So your player doesn't actually stop when you select them when you're defending, which is so irritating, um, which is a massive improvement on defending. It doesn't help. I mean, it does help, but it's defending overall is still much harder just because the timing of tackles and stuff, your players dive in. If you get it slightly wrong, your players dive in massively and it, it's so annoying. <laughs> I think playing against the AI as well, AI defending. Mm. When you're in, when you're in, when they're in a bank of four and four, four midfielders, four defenders, and you're trying to break them down, it's mm. really really difficult. But the moment you break their lines, mm. it be, it becomes easy because the defenders they want to stay they want to step they want to stay in that line and they don't want to break formation, mm. and it becomes yeah. easy to to make a a sweaty goal essentially. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all you have to do is just knock the ball forward, really. And uh, generally speaking, uh. The AI kind of just gives up, but it doesn't mean necessarily the other players do, but especially the one that you took on. If you beat them, they give up. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. Um, I do want to talk about sliding tackles because I think I've maybe pulled off four, maybe five, <laughs> just because the, the AI just doesn't give you any chance to slide tackle because they, they barely sprint. And then if they are sprinting, by the time you get close to them, they stop sprinting and they know that you're coming near. Um so it's very, very difficult. The only times I've been able to slide tackle is if when the AI is controlling the ball, maybe from an air ball or something, and then you've been charging in. And even then, it's very hard. Um, I don't know what you found, Chuck. I didn't find that at all. I felt slide tackling was very rewarding. And it, it was difficult to do because you're right. But when you do get it right, and I did quite a lot with my centre-backs because they were they, both my centre-backs were really slow to begin with. So when you did get a slide tackle right, and I seem to have a lot, a lot of opportunities to do them, mm. they were really good. They kept the ball. The player went flying about 60 yards down mm. the other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, one thing I do like is that the AI does like to take, take you on quite a lot. Um when you're defending. So I found like, say if you're a slightly slower player, like stats wise compared to the other, the, the, the person the AI is, the AI will sometimes knock the ball past you and try to run past you as well. And then you get a more of a shoulder to shoulder thing, which you never got in previous FIFAs. Um, so, so that's a nice addition as well. It makes it, it adds just a bit more realism because you get that lows in games. Like Salah loves to do that. Um, and so many other players do it as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's another good improvement. Um, but yeah, I think the only thing we haven't touched on now is interceptions. So Chuck's internet has completely died. So I'm just going to, uh, finish this section by myself. Um, so we got to interceptions, uh, overall interceptions are weird. They're really inconsistent. Sometimes you make a good interception and 
you're really rewarded for it, basically, because it's nice you get it under control. And sometimes your player can just walk over the ball and it's really irritating. So in some respects, it's no different to the previous FIFA. Um, but yeah, it's a bit weird because now the passing is a lot more crisper. You do get more more times where the ball just goes underneath your feet and stuff. So, um, you know, you can only make reasonable interceptions if the player ha- has high interceptions. Otherwise, if you're a player with like maybe 50 interceptions or below, you're just not going to make them. And and that's just, even if you're playing against other 6 year eight players, it's just not going to happen just because of the way the mechanics work in the game. Um, but then again, a majority of you will probably be playing ultimate team. Um, so you won't be playing with 50 rated players. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it, it will be okay, but it's not really improved. Uh, the passing has improved, but yeah, not, not really the, the interception wise. Um, then moving on to the penalty section. Uh, penalties, in my opinion, are so much better. Chuck has a complete, completely opposite opinion, um, but he has written down what he wants me to say. Um, in my opinion, they're so much better uh, just because the AI, when you take them, uh, well, so shooting-wise, penalties are exactly the same, but regarding the AI being ridiculously overpowered and saving every single one of them, um, that's completely changed now. Uh it seems like the AI doesn't really know and does just guess now where you're going. Um, but you do have to still be a good penalty taker because say if you're looking in one direction the entire time um, and you're on world class or above, the AI will still guess the right way. But you you have to do like you would do in any other online game. If, if you play at a high level, you'll know that you need to change direction at the last second um, because the player will be looking where your head is looking. And that gives away where you're going to shoot the penalty. So you have to change it the last second. Now, the AI doesn't guess once you move, whereas before it would. Um, so that's an improvement. And, you know, it just makes penalties so much better because at least you can consistently score penalties now. Unless the goalkeeper does just, uh, by, by luck, guess the right way. Um, Chuck hasn't had this. But then again, I'm not sure Chuck does change direction mid midway through. <laughs> so that's probably why um, he thinks that, penalties haven't improved and are still exactly the same um but yeah so that's that's my opinion i think they've improved um uh, gonna move on to shooting now and uh maybe it is just a beta but it does feel really good really strong um it does feel like we traveled back to around 2006 uh, 15 um with fifa 15 um finesse shots have improved you do have to have about 80 curl and 80 shot power um and obviously 80 finishing or long shots uh depending on where you are uh, but yeah, it does feel like it's improved. Finesse shots are back to what they kind of used to be. It's not massively overpowered, so like you can still get it wrong. Um, but if you get the right shot power and stuff, the the goalkeeper either make a save or you'll score. So um, you tend to not miss too much unless you obviously you, you blaze it too much or um, something like that. But but yeah, shooting finesse shots, they're they're great. They're how they should be really. Um, and you do notice if your player hasn't got any curve <laughs> because they just shoot it straight. They, they do the animation where they go and hit it with the side foot, but it's still straight. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, so that's that's OK. But shooting in general, like power shots and driven shots, they have not changed at all. Um, but shooting was good in the last FIFA. So um, I'd be very impressed if they were to improve that anyway. Um, so, yeah, I've got no complaints from the shooting department. Heading as well, um, which we're going to move on to now, crossing and heading. Um, crossing is very, very nice, very, very clean. Part of the passing section, I mean, we kind of, I think we mentioned it. Uh, it's very nice. Now, when you cross a ball, it actually locks on to the player that you're aiming for before the, it kind of gets to you. So you can kind of angle where, you can kind of angle your run towards the ball as the ball's coming towards you. Um which is really nice, uh, and it's a nice addition because basically you change players so much quicker. When you cross it, you change players straight away, and then you can gamble on it and move your player in the right way you want to hit the ball. Um, and then if we move on to heading, heading is very, very good. Uh, it's taken an improvement. It's not quite as OP as FIFA 17, uh, where like literally any header you got, um, <laughs> you get it on target and stuff. But it's nice because you can get some power headers now. Um, it's not overpowered at all. I think it's the right balance. Um, it's very difficult to get them on target, but when you get the right power, um, it's more reliant on the flight of the ball. So it's more reliant on the delivery of the ball. 
So if you get the delivery right, you're more than likely going to get the heading right, um, which is like real life. Because obviously, some, so for example, in FIFA 17, when heading was ridiculously good, if the delivery was slightly off, you could still header it on target um, with a fair bit of power. Whereas now it's more reliant on how much power have you got on the cross, whereas the accuracy on the cross as your player have to jump is your player underneath for the ball. Um, because if it's underneath you're not, not going to do well anyway so it's going to be more like a clearance but that's always been the way apart from FIFA 17 um, but yeah so it's it's a good improvement it's way more realistic um, but yeah and I've, I've there's also we, we've touched on goalkeepers before um, but I think I think we're touching them again quickly uh, when you head the ball I have had a quite a few times if you've got a power header and you head it right in the middle of the goal because it's a power header, and say, for example, if it's from a corner or something, um, the goalkeeper will manage to get hand to it, but it won't get a strong hand to it, and we'll still go in the back of the net. And I know some people will absolutely hate that, and people will rage, but it is realistic, because that is what happens in real life. Um, goalkeepers don't always get hand to it and save it. They sometimes get hand to it, and it goes in the back of the net. And that is a theme for goalkeepers as well. They do now follow the ball, um, when it's shot so say for example if a shot is skimming wide the goalkeepers don't just leave it now like they usually would or make a slight animation and leave it they still go towards the ball and sometimes they will save it even if it is going wide because it's what they think in quotes um, is, is what's going to happen like they think it's going in so in that respect it is a massive improvement I think goalkeepers overall are great now um, last FIFA they I thought it was a bit of a downgrade because they kind of redid the goalkeepers. And so the last two FIFAs, they kind of redid the goalkeepers and it was a bit of a downgrade in my opinion, even though they introduced some animations, they kind of got rid of a lot as well. Um, whereas now it seems they've just built on top of um, what they had before, um, which is obviously a step in, direct, step in the right direction. Whereas now they follow the flight of the ball as well. So the, play, the goalkeepers actually look where the, where the ball was going. So it just, it just seems much much nicer, much more crisp as well. We're going to keep on saying that because that is the overall feel um, as with any new FIFA, to be honest. But, um, but yeah, the goalkeepers do feel a bit nicer now. Um, and yeah, th there has been some times when they make ridiculous saves as well. You always get that in FIFA. Um, I think it's just because it's so hard to probably just to program the goalkeepers because trying to work out, is that a realistic shot to save or is it not? Or is this just a one-off great save from the goalkeeper? I'm trying to work out the dynamics of that because there are times when the it is obvious the animation has been sped up to then make the save for the goalkeeper just because they've got good stats and it looks unrealistic. There is still some of that um, in this FIFA, but overall, I do think it's an improvement. They have added some animations and taken some animations in back into the game where they, it wasn't before. Um, so that is nicer. It's, it's much nicer to see. And also a massive improvement as well, which I think is... It, it used to be in the game back in... Uh, FIFA 09 was the last time I remember it, um, where goalkeepers would make a save or they'd parry it, but they'd parry it down uh, to the floor below them and then pick it up uh, just to basically take all the power out of the shot. And you see goalkeepers doing it all the time in real life, especially if there's no players around them. Most goalkeepers do it anyway, just to basically not take the risk of handling the ball and, make, and fumbling it and going back in the net. Um, goalkeepers do this now and they do it quite often it can be irritating sometimes because they obviously they, they do it and fumble it and then it goes straight to an attacker and they score but you get that in real life anyway so again I feel like it's way more realistic and it's more reliant on the handling stat um, of, of that part of the game anyway uh, but yeah I, I think it's a big improvement so, so yeah um, and I think that will end this episode and we'll go back uh, with more glitches and stuff. And we'll talk about way more with the AI in the next episode. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I've been MGOF1200. Chuck has been Chuck, obviously. Um, I've also been Matt Goff as well. That is me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, obviously, don't forget to check out our sponsor for this episode as well. It is the 3 Nor podcast. It is a podcast that myself, Chuck, and my friend Ethan, who if you guys have followed the channel before, you probably know. Um, Ethan Ormson. Hello, Ethan. Goodbye, Ethan. That PSN. Um, we will do a podcast now and we talk about football and it's literally just anything that we can think about, we talk about. Um, we, all, we each come with a point uh, that we want to talk about, for example, maybe Thiago Silva's career or top 10 greatest Premier League moments or 
I don't know, anything that we can think of that are random that we think might interest you. Um, and we do it. It's about an hour long uh, podcast. So, um, you know, if you guys are into podcasts, definitely go check us out. Uh, it's 3 nil podcast. That is the name of it. And we're pretty much everywhere on Apple, Apple podcast, um, Castbox, uh, Spotify, loads of different ones. Probably what you listen to podcasts on. If you are a podcast person, we're on there. So um, do check us out. We are on YouTube, but we're not taking that seriously because we're trying to push the podcast platform rather than the video platform. Um, so, so that is why. But yeah, do check us out. That is our sponsor for this video and the rest of these FIFA beta videos. So yeah, do check us out, like I said before. Anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you again next time.